started uh, second row Mason Young. So right. I wanted to ask you about uh, Josiah and Kendall Dolby and Gentry. How have you seen those guys handle fall camp and the mock week and kind of the competition at, at cornerback? Well, I think they've handled it really well. Um, it's been very competitive, and uh, that's a situation that will continue to be competitive. And, uh, you know, there's so much we, – we've, we've still got position battles going on and uh, through, through this week, which is a great thing, you know, to have some competitive depth like that. So, um, you know, that's, that's where we are. Yeah, Ted, we're year two with uh, you and Brent here. Yeah. How is your uh, relationship, not personal, but the, the professional relationship evolved? Is it different now than it was this time last year? Um, year two, you know, we know each other better. And I have the utmost respect for him as a, as a man, uh, as a head coach, as a leader, as a, a guy that's, that's – been the gold standard in defensive coordinators in college football, so uh, it's a, it's a learning opportunity for me, and uh, the relationship is fantastic, and uh, I, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, Farla, Hi, Ted. Hi. How's it going? Good. You? I'm great. Thanks. Wonderful. All right. Uh, I take it you're going to tell me it's all about now, but I'll, I'll take a shot anyway. You... <laughs> <laughs> you're probably right, but go ahead. I know. Well, I, I got to try. Uh, sure. You've stopped at a few places in the SEC, right? Yeah. In, in the past, and I know that you want your line of scrimmage to you get. You want you guys to, uh, an assertion at the line of scrimmage this year. I, I get that. But considering what's ahead, the challenge that's coming your way in this program, and considering your experience in that conference. Are you looking to lay something foundational at the line of scrimmage in particular to meet that challenge? I'm going to go back to your original statement where you said it's all about the now and this year. And you were absolutely correct. Uh, but certainly building a foundation moving forward and wanting to get better and better each and every year, each and every week, each and every day, uh, that's part of the process. And so, uh, you know, we're, we are focused on the right now. That's, that, that would be a fatal mistake. And, uh, so nobody in our building, uh, Coach Venables, has made it very clear, and that doesn't happen in our building. Hope you don't blame me for asking. No, I, I, you, you got a job to do. I get it. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the answer. Yeah, man. Okay, Jesse. Ted, you mentioned you've got some position uh, groups still going through some some battles. Want to ask you about the defensive line? Just it seems like there's a lot of guys there vying for spots. What, how have you seen that that position group? How have you seen that battle, you know, play out over the last few weeks? Well, it's like 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 you just said. It's very competitive. Uh, there's, we've got we've got some depth there, and uh, you know that's those those battles, you know, there are daily battles or, or period battles or play by play battles, and you know we hope that that will go on through the end of the year uh, because that makes everybody better. But to have guys that uh, that we feel good about to to roll in there, and uh, like I said, it'll it'll play itself out, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, certainly that's a that's a position where those we have some battles still ongoing. Communication between you and Brent on game day came up, right? Is that is something you were working through in, in the latter part of the season? Correct. I don't remember seeing that. Okay. Well, but anyway, was there okay. you're taking stock of that in the off season of how you guys did that, and are there is there anything you're doing differently or mechanically differently as you get started? No, we're year? in constant communication. Um, you, you know, as things evolve, you know he's. He's done this a long time and, and been great at it. And uh, you know his input and uh, you know is there's certainly that. And uh, that, again, that's that's I, I love it. Uh, I love being a part of a team, and I think we've got a great team as a staff. And uh, I, I I look forward to coming to work every day. Okay. Chad, you brought in depth at linebacker because you guys thought you were so thin. Brought in some really good players. Could you talk about the guys at that spot, and also Arkansas State offensively? What do they do, and what do you see out of them? Well, you just you know again there are there's some ongoing competition, and we've got some guys that have uh, we've mixed and, and matched different combinations at times just to see uh, give guys opportunity to play with different people against different groups, and uh, as a result of that, there's been a lot of growth um, as far as Arkansas State goes. Uh, you know, they've got seven returning starters on offense, a, a transfer quarterback, a transfer receiver that led Syracuse in, in receiving, also a great punt returner. Uh, so, 
you know, it's, 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 it's every week's a challenge. Every week's a challenge, and this is certainly no different. And we have a lot of respect for them and uh, know that they're going to come in here and give, a, give us their best shot, and it's up to us to give them our best shot, and that's what we're focused on. Yeah, um, you know, that position has a very long job description, you know, and you've got to be multi-talented. Uh, you can't be a one-dimensional player there, a one-dimensional linebacker to play there. And uh, it's, again, he and Justin have pushed each other this, this off, certainly last spring, this off season, and now into, into fall camp. And uh, as a result of that, it's made both of them better. And as a result of that, it's made us better. And uh, again, that's a... Uh, that's that's a good battle, and uh, you know, with the variety of roles that we ask those guys to do, so uh, it's it's been good for us. And I'm I'm real proud of Desan. Uh, I think that he has come in and uh, worked his tail off, and uh, has picked things up uh, quickly. And he's a smart football player that uh, that's got great length, and uh, you know, it's it's going to be a good player. Uh, you'll have to ask him that. I'm not. I'm not his brother. Uh, but he and Day, uh, uh, you know, they love each other. They're brothers, man. And uh, that's 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 cool to see as a as a coach, as a dad. And I'm sure, you know, it's really cool for their their, their parents to see as well. Sure. Ryan. Yeah, Ted. Just building off of some of the the questions that you've been asked about the defensive line. How comfortable are you with that group? Uh, going into Saturday and maybe compare that to, to how you felt uh, after the bowl game at that position when you obviously made it a priority to upgrade mm -hmm. there and specifically the way that the the, new, the, the, the returners have handled that uh, increased depth, increased competition. Well, it's it's been a win-win. Um, the, the new players we added were cer certainly uh, good players that have got a fighting to, to get every rep and the, the guys that were here it's made them better and uh and, a, and they approached it mentally in a very good way uh they welcomed they welcomed it they didn't like they were very welcoming and welcomed the competition and as a result of that it's, it's raised the level of everybody do you wonder about that when you go through a process like that about how those guys are going to handle it uh we got great kids here uh but certainly Team chemistry is a big deal, and uh, you know now with the, the transfer portal being, you know, a part of college football that that's not going away anytime soon. But the cool thing about our locker room is that if guys come in and they can help make our football team better, they're very our, our guys are very welcoming and appreciate that. Sure. Jenny. Um, Ted, I was wondering about Reggie Pearson. He's a guy who comes in with 30 plus starts in Power Five football. What does it mean to have a guy of that level of experience come in in the secondary? And, and then I'm just curious sort of what, what you've gotten to know about him, just his personality, sort of the, the character, the, the personality he brings to the team. Well, uh, he's very prideful, very prideful, and uh, takes, takes, takes coaching really well. He wants to be coached. Uh, he's a very coachable guy. And obviously the, the physicality that, that we all know about uh, and him as a person, uh, very humble. Uh, he's a married man, got married. Uh, so between that and uh, the humbleness, uh, he's got you know he's got a he's got a, a level of maturity that maybe some guys may not have, but you know he should. He's older. Yeah. George, Ted, you you got a handful of freshmen in Josiah Payton and, and PJ that feel like guys that can maybe step in and contribute from day one. How do you handle getting them in and getting them some real playing time, especially on Saturday? Well, here's, here's our philosophy on playing time, is that if you earn the right to play, you're going to play. Uh, and certainly you want to be able to play them in, in every situation. Uh, but, you know, it's, that's, that's our philosophy on them as far as if they're going to play. Uh, yeah. Do you feel like those three are, are ready to play? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as ready as we want them to be, no. But uh, you know, I'm really. I think they've come a long way uh, 
from when they first got here, and they've made tremendous strides, and all of them have a very bright future. All right, Ryan Chapman. Back to the linebackers. You mentioned the ongoing battles. Has that got you guys to a point where you feel like coming into the season you've got a lot more depth you can actually roll out there on Saturdays as opposed to tasking Danny with, with so many snaps <laughs> like last year? Yes. One hundred percent. Is that process as far along as you want it to be? No. When you left the season last year? Uh, it's never as far along as we want it to be, but it's a, it's a lot further along than it was. And uh, you know, I, again, our, our guys have done a good job of of growing and maturing and taking, taking coaching. And, and you know, so much of the off season certainly is devoted to your upcoming opponents, but it's also self-scouting. What, what have we got to get better at? You know, what are the areas, specific areas that we have to get better as a unit, as a position group, and also as an individual player? And uh, they've all done a, done a nice job with that. Yeah. Second row, right, Justin? Yeah, I know you can't talk about specific names, but on the recruiting trail last play, you guys got some really good, talented guys with Oklahoma connections. Can you talk about just the importance of retaining those in-state talent? Uh, well, I think that if you ask anybody, you know, any coach that coaches college football, they all want to own their own state, and it starts with it starts with that. And certainly, uh, Coach Venable's philosophy here is is, is that. Um, so, I think that uh, it's, it's going it's going well, and uh, going to continue to go well and get better. Get time for three more. Uh, left side, third row, Randall. Going back to that linebacker depth, you know, that center that might take Danny, give him more rest, do you think that could be create a situation where maybe his stats aren't as um, high as they were last year, but his, you know, you look at the film and his performance is better? Well, I think that, number one, you know, this is a team game, and it's about winning and doing what's best for our team to win. And uh, certainly playing better within his reps, absolutely. But I don't think that, you know, I, don't, I think if you ask Danny, you know, I don't think he's concerned with stats. The stat that he's concerned with is winning and losing. And um, so, to your point, you know, that, 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 just see how it plays out. You know, you, you never, I can't, I can't predict that. So, yeah, but again, it goes back to his number one. He wants to win, regardless of how many tackles he has. Yeah, Coach, back here. Yes, sir. What is Coach Venable's involvement in the play calling on game day? And are you the primary play caller? How much input has he given you on like a play-to-play -play basis? Uh, he has input in everything we do. Uh, he's a head coach, and he is a very strong, powerful, positive leader. Um, so that's that's how it goes. So who's primarily calling the plays defensively? A lot of it, – it, it, he has – I do, and then he has – if he wants to override something and call something, then he does, and and that's how we roll. And you know, it's it's no different than a lot of places. Yeah, and last one, third from the left. Hey, Coach, you talked about it earlier, year one and year two, making a, a big jump. Uh, what do you want to see out of your unit this Saturday? A big jump, uh, a really big jump. I want to see us uh, play physical. I want to see the execution level. I want to see us play with great strain, and. Uh, and, and put on a good show and, and show that we're trending in the right direction and show our improvement, show, let, let, let our people see the, and our, our own players see the, uh, the value of the hard work that they've put in in the off season. Thank you, Coach. Thank good you deal. Appreciate it. All right.